All right, so let's make a formal introduction for our listener. Uh, good afternoon, Everhart. My name is Claudio, and I'm calling you from Washington, D.C. Uh, for the studios in Fairfax City, we're very humble and grateful that Everhart Craneman accepted our invitation to our show. Everhart, welcome to the show. Hey. So tell me, so go ahead. Okay. So we, you know, we, every, this year has been a crazy year with, with the pandemic and the vaccine, some people, they want to take a vaccine. Yes. No, a musician cannot tour. They cannot go outside that much. How is this affecting your life, your creativity as an artist, a musician? Yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> maybe it is, it is, uh, uh, it is clear for you, but uh, it is uh, no problem for me because I'm an artist. I make paintings and I make music. One problem is I couldn't go on tour to, to make music live, but yeah. I w worked in my studio. In my studio, I make, made big paintings. I just had two big expositions and I make a, a lot of new recordings in my studio. For me, it was a good time to have one year not going out to stand on stage and, and make something. It was so good. In, I worked every day in the studio to make new sounds, very, very clear other sounds. So it is a successful year for me. I know for the most musicians, it was a shit. It was very bad year. Yeah, it was very they bad. They couldn't go out. But, uh, excuse me, but now I'm 76 years old. <laughs> I'm nearly an old man. I, I, I make uh, tours again, but not so, not so many. So it is good to have a little rest for one year working in the studio. Yeah. Where, where, is, where, where are your painting being presented? Like a studio, in museums? Where? Yes, uh, uh, in my studio, in museums, in galleries. In galleries? I have, some galleries. I, I have even some, some, uh, some uh, art lovers from America who, who buy my paintings. Really? I, I, yes, I, I, I have a Facebook page. And yeah. on my Facebook page, I when I make a new painting, I put it on Facebook. And then uh, friends come and say, oh, Eberhard, I like. And sometimes they ask me, oh, is it possible to buy this? Then uh, I say, okay, go in Facebook Manager, we speak about it. Then uh, I uh, tell the price. Most of people say, oh, it is too expensive. I cannot. But I have uh, especially two American uh, art lovers who, who, who buy my uh, paintings. And it is important, one man living in Florida, which is a director of a big museum. He has bought five, six or seven uh, artworks of mine. And he's a Kraftwerk fan too. He's a music fan and an art, art fan. Oh, so, wow, yeah. like me. Yes. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't maybe, maybe, yeah. I will get, maybe I will get a painting for you when I visit you in Dusseldorf. Okay, there, there are people, uh, it is interesting. <laughs> there are people um, who are interested in, in music, especially in Kraftwerk, where, where I worked in 50 or 60 years ago. Yeah. And they, oh, this Kraftwerk musician is a painter too. Oh, I like this. Then I want to buy. But I think they want to buy not because I'm a good painter, because I'm a Kraftwerk man. And I'm a good <laughs> painter too. So I sell my art to America. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, I got you, got you. How many, how many, how many paintings that you do like in a month? <clears throat> oh, that differs. Uh, it depends. In, in the last half year, I was uh, working. Uh, uh, I was a lot. I'm, um, I made a lot of paintings. Maybe uh, two paintings in a week because I had two big expositions and I had to make the paintings for for this exposition. I was the past last exposition was an exposition for Josef Beuys. Josef Beuys is a very important uh, German artist who, who died. Uh, he was born 100 years ago. And so uh, I had been invited to a Beuys exposition and I made about 10 Josef Beuys portraits. This was a lot of work to make portraits because normally I am an abstract painter. I make abstract compositions. But for me, Boyce is an important person because I made a performance with him. In 1968, I made the music and he made his Handaktion. And this was the reason I thought about back to Josef Boyce and my, made uh, Josef Boyce portraits. And I showed all these portraits in this uh, Boyce uh, uh, gallery. 
But before I had another gallery in, in, in Düsseldorf too, uh, I showed um, very, very modern abstract other, other things, very uh, uh, paintings made by, made by with, with a brush, but worked out uh, electronically with changes and all this, very difficult. And they, <clears throat> did you end up, and they, they, did you end up sell, selling those, the portrait? Yes, uh, some people uh, buy because uh, I must live from this. If I don't s sell anything, I could say goodbye. <laughs> no, I go away. <laughs> so uh, I, I must sell something. But uh, there, there's one problem. Uh, I only make my own thing what I want to do. And this is a problem. This is the same with music. In, in art and music, uh, the, the art dealers and the music dealers they tell you what they want to have. They say, please ma make this music for me. Please make this painting for you, for me. I don't. I only make what I do. And this is a problem because I could uh, earn more money if yeah. I would uh, collaborate with the art dealers and <coughs> with the music dealers. I don't because <coughs> very many of them are totally shit. They are so bad. I don't want to have this. I make my thing. If there's someone who buys my music, okay. If there's someone who buys my paintings, okay. If not, is okay. Gotcha. I, <laughs> I, I understand. <clears throat> so, were you born like um, in a, in a musical family at all? When you began playing no, either guitar no. or piano? No, no, nothing. I I was born in a very normal standard family. Family. My my my. My father was working in a bureau, bureau in an office, and my wife. At this time, I was born 1945. She was a housefrau, housewoman, housewife. Housewife, yeah. Yeah, yes, something like this. So it was totally normal and very strong and Catholic. All this, no, and uh, <laughs> maybe this is the reason. Why uh, uh, I want to go, to go away from this, from this education, from this strong normal education. I went out to make my own thing against uh, family ideas. And really? first they did not like it. They said, "Oh, uh, Eberhard, do, do, please don't don't become a musician. Don't become a painter. You don't earn money. You can't can uh, you cannot live from this. Uh, may may a normal go into an office to work like my father, but I did not." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and then so you you went to um so you end up going to the Dusseldorf uh, to study painting the Art Academy right yes but because this I I grew up in Dortmund it is Dortmund is a town uh, away fifty kilometers away from Dusseldorf the first thing I made was uh, studying music in Dortmund at the conservatory I studied double bass. Uh, the cons conservatory du double bass, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like this, no normal instrument, and in classical, with uh, to to see the notes, the sheet. I played in a classical orchestra. Everything very very, very normal, but it yeah. was very interesting for me because uh, it was good to learn what, what is music. You you know you have very many contacts to other musicians, and you know the most of the crowd rock musicians don't know what it is, classical music. Even they co can't read the sheets, the notes. They just play for fun what they have the feeling in them. That's right. I'm another kind of boy. I was, I, first I studied classical. So yeah. I know what music is, what the sound is making with you. Yeah. And uh, uh, at, even at a conservatory uh, time when I <clears throat> played in a classical orchestra, I made in the night. I made jazz music in in Dortmund in jazz keller. Very, very. I, I did not. Uh, I earned money, but not so much in this time. I got twenty Deutschmark for one night playing from eight to one o'clock in in concerts with double bass. And my my fingers were were wound by playing. <laughs> bam, 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 only this. But later I saw ah, it is more interesting to make. Exper experimental music. Then I stopped playing the double bass. I, I bought a guitar, a tenor saxophone, a clarinet, a piano. Now, now I play about 30 different instruments and I like it very much. Wow. So, <laughs> so what, what kind of, when you were, <clears throat> what kind of music were you listening to at the time? <clears throat> 
Uh, yeah, this is a very uh, interesting question. I don't listen to music uh, I, I make myself. I only listen, most of the time, I listen to uh, early American jazz musician. At the John time. Paul, yeah. Yes, John Coltrane. For me, he is the boss. He's the godfather of all. The free music, 1965 to 1967, of John Coltrane, tenor saxophone player, a black musician, very, very good. For me, it is the best music. And I often listen to this kind of music because this gives me power. This gives power to me. And I, I have the ideas of Coltrane in my head, and I, uh, but I make another kind of music out of this. What, 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 about, Miles what, what about Miles Davis? Yes, <clears throat> I like Miles Davis too. Sometimes I uh, listen to Miles Davis too. Okay. These two uh, musicians, I, I think they are the greatest in, in bebop and jazz music. Yeah, there's a lot of American. Uh, do you like um, the early jazz, like Louis Armstrong? Uh, yes, I, I began with this, no? but no, now not so much. Because, uh, no, I, I like more uh, Duke Ellington. The, Duke the, Ellington. The, Yes, the, the very early, the first uh, recordings of Duke Ellington, I think about 1920. They are so good. Sometimes I listen to this. It is so, it is much better than all he made later on. Yeah. You have, do you have like a big vinyl collection? No. No? No, no. Or CDs? I, yes, yes, I have not, not so much. Maybe I have 100 uh, vinyls and I have uh, 100 CDs, but this, this is enough for me because I have special friends I like to hear, to listen to, and I, I don't buy so much of this. And, and now it is uh, it is possible, uh, yeah, you know Spotify. Yeah? Spotify is very difficult mm. because it is a shit thing, but it is uh, uh, practice, it is uh, okay, because you can hear three million kinds of music, classical music, jazz mm. music. And sometimes yeah. when I'm on the way, I make Spotify and I listen to this and I'm on Spotify too. It, uh, the bad thing is, the bad thing is, Spotify uh, don't pay so much money for you. Of course. Uh, in, in, for, in former times, when I made records and CDs, uh, I, I got one or two euros for one for one uh, CD or LP. And now on Spotify, people listen to one song. I get zero point zero one uh, euro. It is nothing, nearly nothing. Yeah. It is it's just, It is betrug. They are criminals. Yeah, but, but it is a good platform for information. When, when I go to when I go to Dusseldorf to visit visit you, I will bring you some vinyl. Okay. Oh, yeah. another information for you. In this in this year, I'm very su successful with vinyls. In this year, I got three vinyl productions: one made in England, one made in France, and one made in Netherlands. I can show you when you ha you are here. This yeah, week. yeah. I, I I saw the work. So I, when I interview um, Carl, yeah. he, he he sent me the record that the two of you like it's like a, with glasses and it's like oh, yellow. Yeah. Yes. It's a very yeah. good album. Yes, yes. I have that one. So yes. Carl sent me signed that. So when oh. I visit you, you need to sign the other side. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. He he will kick. Carl is a very good person. I, I, yes. Mm -hmm. And Lutz Lutz also. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of very very famous. German people. So, so you, you, so you, you, your parents told you, well, don't study music, don't go to work, go get yes. a regular job in a, yes, yes. In a big, big yes, so. <laughs> with a tie. Yes, yes. I even had in this time as a young man, I had what is in, in your clothes, I had an ansu, a jacket with tie, all this. But when I was 18, I uh, 16, I throw it all away. I did not want this. Yeah. I had long hairs and uh, dirty clothes. Oh, uh, oh, no, nah, this is a development in the, in the youth. And then, so when you were <coughs> going to the art student, you end up um, founding the, the group uh, Peace Off, right? Yes. Yes. This that was, was my first band? Yes, this was my first band in, in Düsseldorf. I was I was studying <clears throat> I was studying art at the Kunstakademie Düsseldorf, and there was one uh, uh, the the most famous professor of art in this time was Josef Beuys, 
And in the Joseph Beuys class, there were many young people uh, who, who not only made, made uh, paintings and all this, they made music too. But the interesting thing, they were not uh, real musicians. They didn't study music. They only made uh, very loud noise with their instruments. I have the feeling they even could not play correct the guitar and drums, but they did it. And they uh, one time they asked me, oh, Ebert, uh, we, sometimes we meet in the Kunst Academy, can you play with me, with us? I said, okay. And I liked it very much because uh, it was, it was, <laughs> it was a fight against the, the grown up people in this time. It, we began in 1967 and 68, if, uh, maybe you know about it. It was a student's revolution in Germany and in France yeah. too. And very many people went on the, on, on the street and made power against police. Huh? And they threw stones again to the police. And I threw stones against the society, but uh, yeah, intellectual stones with, with my art and music. I, I'm pissed off was anti-music, music against music, against the people. It was only noise and dirt. Dirty nose, rough, something like this, and we then we made a performance with Joseph Beuys, and uh, and yeah, he he made his <clears throat> and we he made him with music. Ah, because I have another computer nearby, and I have the sound on it. If you want, I can yeah yeah open the sound. You can yeah. hear. I I have uh, sounds. I have sound. Eight sound examples from '67 up to today. If it you want, I can and we can. I, it runs and we can speak. Yeah, now yeah. I begin with this. Up. <laughs> can you hear? Yeah. Uh, this is piece of this was 1968. <laughs> well, um, you, you guys end up doing per live performance, live performance. This how was people, how many, how many people? Yeah, 300. Wow, it was very success successful. People liked it very much. We made it in cream cheese in Düsseldorf, 1968, with, together with Josef Beuys. And this time, you know, people s smoked a lot of, uh, uh, what is it, gas? Uh, marijuana. Mar marijuana, small, oh, in the, the room, a small room with 300 people. So, so, so uh, and they all smoked marijuana in the room. The, the room was full of uh, nebel, yeah. like four, and very many we music musicians too. We made Mariana, and then we put LSD in, and then oh, we were very away from 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 the real world. But it was very interesting. Yeah. So and then so and then so you you continue with 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 that group piece of for for a while. They record. They didn't record it or no? Any vinyl? No. No. Yes. Yes. I I, I made a vinyl now. In this year, 2021, this year, there was a French uh, record company. They asked me, oh, Ebert, you made this performance with Piss Off. Uh, can, you give me, uh, can you give us the sound? We make a uh, vinyl from this. And I gave, and I have the vinyl now here. And uh, I can show it to you when you are in Düsseldorf. Yeah, and then you end up selling those? Yes, yes, they are selling very good, which is okay. Really? Wow. Where yes. in France or, or in <laughs> Germany? No, everywhere in the whole world, it it is goes away from France, but uh, if you order, you can order it. Uh, I I can send you uh, a, a link where you can order it later. Yeah. When, when I can visit, order, you when can I order. Visit you. Yes, I can, yeah, yes, I can. You can. Everyone in the whole world can order it in France. The price of one uh, vinyl is twenty one euros. But the problem is, even for Germany, to send it from France to Germany, people have to say 14 euros too. So they, you have to pay 35 euros. It's expensive, uh, it's expensive, right? For, for music lovers. 
And if yes. they tell uh, to America, it is much more expensive. But I think there are too some people who are interested in, in this and buy this. Well, all the people that buy your that buy your painting, maybe they would like to get the piece off too. Yes, yes. All the yes. all the craftwork people. <laughs> yes, so, they like it. And, and then after that, in the in the early in your career, you end up joining Kraftwerk, uh, and then you you know you play bass guitar. How how did it happen? How you end up playing with uh, Florian, with Ralph, with Peter Schmidt, and how did it happen? How you end up getting with uh, Kraftwerk? Uh, I I began with Florian in '67. The, the reason was uh, in '67 I I had some some gigs with Piss Off, not very hard uh, anti-music. And uh, sometimes when we played, there was a small little boy, little in the corner, and listened to very exact what we are doing with, with this off. And one time after a concert, he came to me and asked me, oh, Eberhard, is it possible? Nee, nicht Eberhard, Mr. Kahnemann, is it possible that I can uh, play with you? And this was Florian Schneider Islim. And then we made some gigs with Florian. The, the band very... <laughs> Powerful and Florian very soft with his foot, playing foot with it. And then uh, we, we we began to make our uh, own music. This was the beginning of Kraftwerk, 1967. <clears throat> Only Florian and me. We we met in my home and we met in his home to make music. And sometimes I recorded a little bit. I have a sound example. I just uh, show you uh, of you course, the of, of 60, Florian and me. Yeah. This is Florian. I play. I play tenor, tenor saxophone. Yeah. Florian plays electronic flute. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we play the same thing. Saxophone and flute. You, you see, it is a, it is another kind. It is not piss off. Piss off was anti music against yeah. everything, and <laughs> here with Florian uh, begins a new thing. It yeah. is more music because we are both interested to make in making good music. And uh, I studied music, and uh, I think Florian had a good teacher in playing. Uh, yeah. the fruit so we could play together it was very good and, and then when when uh, Ralph and, and Peter Schmidt came later yeah later uh, uh, Ralf Hütter came one year later in 1968 uh, he came to the group because first we made alone Florian and me but then we said oh we can make a group maybe more people then we need a drummer and we need a, a piano player player and then yeah. the piano player was uh, at, at in the beginning was Ralf Hütter and the drummer the first drummer was uh, Charlie Weiss and I this bet, was yeah. very interesting Charlie Weiss was a free jazz drummer uh, Florian and Ralf found this free jazz drummer when they visited Berlin and he played in Berlin in a free jazz group. And then they asked him, oh, are you interested with us in, to play something in Düsseldorf? Uh, they just put it in, in their car and said, oh, co come with us to Düsseldorf. And he came to Düsseldorf. So we were uh, this band of four people. Wow. And you, you, you participated in the first two Graphical record, the first one, the second, or no, only the first? No, no, uh, I, I'm not. <laughs> this is a very interesting thing. Yeah. I'm not on the records. Why? Yeah, there's. I can tell you, this is this is the shit with your best friends, because uh, Florian and Ralph both yeah. come from very famous, big and rich families, yeah. and they learned by their parents how to make money. And they make more money when they play alone, only two people. 
they get the whole money for, for only for themselves. And they did not uh, take Charlie Weiss to the studio and did not take me to the studio. And the other interesting thing, things, I made the contact to the studio and I did not know that they only use it for themselves because I was long ago a friend of Connie Planck. Connie Planck is the most important uh, studio uh, 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 record ma maker in, in Europe in this time. Yeah, yeah. And I, I made music with him uh, two or three uh, years ago for, 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 for earning some money and doing jobs for something. And they, they got the, so Florian Ralf got the address of uh, Connie Planck from me. And then they uh, contacted him, then they made the jobs without me. And this is very bad. I don't like this so much. Oh, man. So you, you don't appear on the record? No. <laughs> but they, they need to give you royalties. Yes, yes. Yeah. Another thing is... Uh, or a lawyer. Another thing is they even take, uh, uh, take his stolen ideas from me to put it in the records. One example, in, I, I think the first or the second uh, uh, LP of Kraftwerk, is, there's un, one piece in it, Fl Florian plays uh, a special steel guitar. Uh, Florian is no steel guitar player. He cannot. He, he plays the flute. But in the band, I played a steel guitar named Hawaiian guitar. And I made very special sounds, this gliding sounds. And then I was not in the band when they recorded it and uh, uh, Florian played my thing. This is a stolen from me. Best friends of this time. I think this was one reason why later I left the band. I think this is not okay to do something with friends, something like this. So the Florian came from like rich family? Yeah. Very rich family. His father was a professor of architecture And he he made very, very big and famous houses. He was a famous architect <laughs> and the father was very rich. The same with uh, Ralf Hütter. Uh, the father was very rich too. So very small little guys came together from rich family to make their own thing. I, uh, I, 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 I'm a critiker of this, but on the other side, they are very good musicians. And they made good music all the time, 20 or 30 years ago. Well. Yeah. And then you, you never saw them again or no? Yes, sometimes. Sometimes I, I, I met them, but not in the last time. I, I met them two, three, four, five years later. But more, uh, I uh, met more uh, uh, Florian Scheider Esleben because he lived in Düsseldorf and uh, uh, Ralf Hütter lives lived and li still lives in Krefeld, another small town by Düsseldorf. And when, when I was walking through Düsseldorf to buy something at the market, oh, I said, well, hi, hi, Florian. I saw him on the market too, on the streets. And we were speaking about the old times and this was okay. So and they, they told you... me something, what was happening within Kraftwerk and with all this, the very, very, very troubleful uh, dealings or what they were what they made yeah so but you're you're end up as, as still you're friends with him you know a little bit <laughs> a little bit uh, you know but it, no the, what they did it's not good it's not good no, it's not good no 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 and then you end up feel free to elaborate and you end up uh playing with you you end up using the, another day another name right uh, fritz muller yes fritz muller <laughs> why 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 you yes Yes, uh, in 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 uh, with Kraftwerk und Neue, yeah. it was it was um, it was music without words, no no lyrics, no 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 spoken words. But for me, it was important in this time. I wanted to say something against the shit society. What has happened outside political uh, statements, something like this, combined with with music, and this was not possible possible with Kraftwerk because. Uh, they did not criticize the world. No? They were more conservative in this thinking. Because they were, Fro and Ralph were f first, they were businessmen. And second, they liked a good life, eating and drinking and uh, wonderful girls. And fourth, they made a little bit of uh, music. 
but I wanted to make another thing. I wanted to tell 